Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to show you how to get cleaner code by avoiding code comments. As this might sound weird to you, let me explain. While code comments could be extremely helpful to understand the purpose of the code, comments are obviously additional to code, so those have to be written, read and maintained additionally. Over time, code and comments which explain the code tend to differ more and more until both may even state the opposite, which would be the worst case for the reader. To avoid this issue, code comments should only be used to document why the code has been written this way and should never explain what the code is doing. First, let's look at some positive examples. This code is a caching middleware for an ASP.NET Core application. Here, is a good example of a code comment. It explains the responsibility and basic functionality of the class. This is another good one. It explains why we have this non-obvious code and even provides a web page which probably gives more background information. Now let's look at some other code. This one is about parsing exceptions like this. It has an exception type, it has an exception message, and here's the stack trace. The first thing we see is that code comments are used to split this method into parts. There's a better way to do it. Instead of comments, let's use methods to extract parts of the method into separate methods and give those methods a proper name. So let's do it. We take our first part of the code and use the IDE to extract the method. Let's preserve the var here. And now we give this method a proper name. Clean up white spaces. Now, this comment is no longer needed as the method name nicely explains what this method is about. Let's repeat this pattern. The second part is about reading the exception type and the exception method. Let's extract that manually this time. So let's create another method. Private static. We have to return two strings, so we use a tuple here. And we parse exception type and method. Of course, we have to pass the lines. Here's our code. The comment is no longer needed. We have the exception type here and the exception message, and we return it as a tuple. Now let's use it instead of this code here. Exception type and the message, and we get this from our new methods. One more time. Third step extract stack trace and apply some cleanup. So this is a bigger one. Let's Remove it here right away. Parse stack trace. Okay, another method. Private static with only list string parse stack trace and we have to pass the lines again and here's our code and we return the stack trace we have parsed 
common we can remove. And the last one, extract word cloud. Let's use our IDE again. Extract method. Compute word cloud. Okay, so this comment is no longer needed. And instead of setting it here directly, we rather want to re return it. So let's see which type we need. It's a dictionary of string and int. And now we can return it. Okay, we could remove quite some comments and replace it with methods with a proper name. But there's something more we can do, which is here we have an if statement, and in this if statement we have some detail, again with comment, and we can also move this into a separate method. So let's extract one more method. It is about remove aggregate exception. And of course, this comment is then no longer needed as the method name again nicely explains what the method does. So now this method is nicely readable without any code comment. Let's see what else we can do about this code. Here we have a method we already extracted, but we still have two comments for a rather complex link use statement. Instead of commenting what the code is doing, we can introduce local variables, give those local variables a proper name, and then again remove the code comments. Let's try that. So according to the comments, what we do here is first we remove unwanted CLR startup code. Let's give this part a variable name, application stack trace. And this goes up to this part. And the second part is about extracting words. So let's give this a name as well. Words with count. And we get this from the application stack trace. Oh, we forgot the equals here. Now those comments can be removed because we have variable names which explain what the expression is about. Of course, we still need to return the end result. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Here's a pretty complex if condition, and there's a code comment explaining what this condition is about. Let's apply the same pattern again. Instead of commenting what the code is doing, let's rather extract that into a separate method and give this method a proper name. So this code is about checking for inner exceptions. Contains inner exceptions. And what we have to parse is the stack trace. Let's remove the comments. Generate the method. And paste the code here. A little bit reformatting. And once again, one comment removed and replaced with a method of a proper name. Let's move on. Here we have some more comments, but looking closer, I would say we rather keep those comments because this time these comments explain why the code exists and does not explain what the code is doing. Of course, we could still extract further methods, but let's keep that for now. Instead, there is one more thing I would like to point out. It is not only about comments explaining what code is doing, what we should avoid. Often, we also find types which have comments explaining how those types are built up. Let's look at an example. What we have built up here in this code 
is a type called exception info. Let's look at it. And here we find another comment. This is a pretty common example. We have some type which contains properties and these properties contain dictionaries. And as soon as we have a dictionary, it's very likely that we want to document what is the key about and what is the value about. Instead of using a code comment, let's use a type to make the code readable and understandable. So let's introduce another class here, public class. Let's name it code type. And instead of using a dictionary, let's use a list or actually a collection of that type. And now we introduce your properties. When using a full name in the context of a code type, it's pretty clear that we are talking about a namespace and a class name. And we need an integer property for the occurrence. Okay, now this comment is no longer needed. But of course, we have to adapt our code to make it work. So instead of a dictionary, let's use read only collection of our new type. And of course, we have to create it here. Return words with count, select our new code type, which has property full name, which was here the key, and the occurrence, Just the count. This is no longer needed. And here we go. Even this API is now more readable because we also here use our new custom type instead of a dictionary. So now if we look at our code again, we see it's pretty readable and we have almost no comment left. And the only comment which is left is not explaining what the code is doing, but why the code is as it is. That's all for today. If you liked the video, support it with a thumbs up. Do you have additional examples how self-explanatory code could avoid code comments? Leave a comment below. See you in the next video.